Okay, so today we're going to talk about PTSD, and I'm here with my good friend Kay. Can't out her here. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about our um, experiences with PTSD. So um, sh- I'm going to let her tell you what PTSD actually is, since there are a lot of um, misconceptions about that. So, Okay. Well, PTSD is basically a psychiatric disorder that can occur in people who have experienced or witnessed natural disasters, serious accidents, terrorist acts, war, combat, rape, or violent assault. PTSD affects 3.5% of U.S. adults. Women are twice as likely as men to have PTSD. So that is some info that I think is very important for everyone to put in their head, you know, and let it sink in. And um, I want to also say that before we start into our experience with PTSD, that this is not going to be a family friendly video. This is not going to be scaled down to uh, avoid triggers. This is going to be some real shit. So if you can't handle some brutal stuff, want to turn it off right here so um i'm going to go into what happened to me and um this is first time i'm really publicly talking about it so um when i was 26 27 so like three years ago my boyfriend and i'm gonna call him out michael anthony pellegrino um was living with me and um he lied to me about everything about you know, what he did for work, which was nothing, what he did for a hobby, which was drugs and alcohol. And um, I felt bad for him because he told me his family didn't like him, blah, blah, blah. So I let him stay with me. Um, Come to find out, he was a raging alcoholic. He was a meth head. And um, within about like three weeks, he went back to drinking beer at, oh, let's say about eight in the morning from then on every day and it finally got to the point where we were watching a hockey game together and I said something I asked him what he was doing or who he was talking to on his phone he jumped over the back of my couch um he picked me up by my throat and shoved me into a wall and was choking me and um my little brother heard me screaming thankfully because I'm like five four uh my ex is um six two And my brother heard me screaming and not being able to breathe. And my brother had to come down and um, pull him off of me and um, call the cops and all that fun stuff. And my brother had just gotten home. And if my brother wasn't home, I probably would have died. And um, this is the same guy that probably a week prior to that, um, you know, we were very close. We were taking a shower together like a lot of couples do. And um, he decided to just stick it in my butt and rape me and he told me that every girl likes it and um I'm you know stupid for saying it hurts and all this stuff and he didn't stop no matter how many times I told him to stop so after all that was told to the cops he only got six months in jail and I have a restraining order against him that expires in about two weeks so it's kind of why I wanted to call him out on this one and um I can't even stand the smell of alcohol. Uh, It's really affected my sex life. Um, I I have a really hard time trusting guys in general. Like, if I'm backed into a corner, chances are I'm going to swing in your face. And um, it's really affected my epilepsy, but I'll get into that in a second. I'm going to let Kay tell her story real quick. Okay, my story is, um, it was one Christmas... um, I fell asleep. I decided to not wait up for Santa. So Santa appears at my room at 12 midnight. And it was my father's best friend. And um, I was only five years old. And he decided to rape me. I remember exactly the song that was playing. It was John Lennon's um, War is Over. That's how vivid the image is still in my head. After that, he continued until I was at the age of 17. He stalked me. He choked me. He mutilated me. He basically um, 
did everything that you could imagine. He did commit also sodomy on me when I was 17 years old. And um, after that, it's been, um, he uh, wounded me so badly in my ovaries and my womb that that made me sterile. So I'm not allowed to have kids. Um, it's, I can't, I, I've, you know, I've fallen into um, some alcohol. I'm a six year recovering alcoholic. And um, I know it may seem like not much, but even one day is hard. So My didn't go twenty four hours. So, so um, this man ended up leaving the country, and even though Interpol tried to find him, he's been very slick, and he ended up murdering a boy, and um, that's why I have to. I'm, I'm protected by this country and protected by SVU just in case that he was to pop up anytime soon because I'm always fearful because he has called, he has called my house at the present day and actually has asked for me to my father. Imagine my father, that was my father's best friend, which they no longer are best friends once my father found out he wanted to kill him. But um, this caused a lot of, um, as you know, PTSD does cause depression, substance use, memory problems, physical and mental health problems. So um, about two months ago, I was sexually assaulted in a hospital, which brought on the PTSD all hardcore. And it was just a horrible experience. And for anybody going through this, I hope that you know that you're not a victim anymore. You're a survivor and you have to you have to forgive the person because that's the only way that you will get your power back. Because if you won't forgive, you will become a slave to the person for the rest of your life. So mm -hmm. I had to let it go and just say, you know, it's it what was it was what it was. I haven't been with a man for 13 years. Um, I It's ruined my ability to even get intimate with a man because I keep hallucinating, like not hallucinating, but basically reliving the whole act. And that's basically my story. And it's, um, it's affected my epilepsy a little bit. Um... You know, because like she said, you have kind of, I don't want to say flashbacks, but kind of like, I guess, flashbacks, would that be kind of correct? Like things will trigger, I guess, memories and, um, you know, that'll stress me out. Stress will lead to epilepsy, blah, 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 but my, or seizures rather, and epilepsy, but um, my epilepsy was not caused by this idiot. He just exacerbated it. Um, and the beautiful part about him is he... Um, he knew I had epilepsy and he still felt free to treat me like crap. But like she said, I've kind of let it go. Um, I don't really think about him until like I got the notification that, you know, I could reinstate my um, restraining order if I wanted to. But I'm like, no, you know, there are guns in this country, but no, I'm kidding. But um, I do go to a psychiatrist for it. I have gone to multiple different psychiatrists for it. Um, it was not easy to get over. I will not lie. It, um, yeah, it, it hurts. I felt like a piece of shit and it felt like it was my fault for the longest time. And I had to come to terms with the fact that it wasn't, and he's the piece of shit, not me. So basically the, the flashbacks are called intrusive thoughts. They're part of the symptoms and diagnosis, um, intrusive thoughts, avoiding reminders, negative thoughts and feelings, arousal and reactive symptoms. Not that you get aroused by the thought, but you become extremely irritable and have angry outbursts and behave mm -hmm. in vastly destructive ways. All and, you get started yeah. very easily and you have problems sleeping. So I I have to take at night in, which is a, basically a it lowers your blood pressure, but it's supposed to help with the PTSD and the night terrors. Because I, once my mother died, 
it all came it all came back like I kept thinking that somehow men were gonna come and just attack me because basically my foundation was gone you know my protector was gone and that really messed me up in the head even worse so I have been to psychiatrists and psychologists but nothing has been able to work not DBT, not CBT, not ECT, not inpatient, not hypno hypnotherapy, not electric magnetic stimulation. Nothing has helped get rid of those memories. It's like if it was just yes. It, it's almost like you have to just come yeah. to terms with it, I guess. I think that the problem, the other thing is that the fact that I can't have kids is like a constant reminder uh-huh. that, you know, that this happened and that I should have, I could have been a mother if this wouldn't have happened. Uh-huh. It's scars. It's constant scars. So it's, you know, and I know a lot of veterans go through this, you know, differently and a lot of other people go through this, but it's... um it's tough, I guess you can say. Uh, but I don't want people to think that just because you're really bothered by a situation that happened in your past that you have PTSD. Like, I don't want that to sound rude, but you know what I mean? Um, PTSD is, not so, is something that's pretty much life-changing, I guess you can say. So, yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Because I think I went through my waist of an ex pretty in-depthly <laughs> yeah, I think I pretty much told my story I I just would really like for this to reach anybody who's maybe going through it um they can they can reach out anytime there's help out there there's hotlines there's a lot of help don't be afraid don't be afraid don't give them that power to take over you, you know, speak up, speak up. The most important thing is to speak up, even though you think that you're at full and everything and that it might hurt your family or it's going to hurt, but it's going to hurt them more to find out that this is going on, you know, and you hid it for so long. Yeah. And and the guilt is a really common thing while you're coming to terms with it. Um, It's like victim's guilt. I think they actually call it. So That's something that comes with it. So if you're in that phase, that that does happen quite often. So I I went through that. I felt bad for my ex. I felt bad for putting him away. I felt bad for him being a piece of shit and me trying to fix him. But no, (laughs) not at all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Um, I guess you could say that um, my DMs are open if you want to talk about PTSD. You know, I know everyone's situation is different, but. I don't mind trying to try to relate about it. So, you know, I, I don't know. I'm sure she wouldn't mind either. She's going to be tagged in here, even though she's um, just like a ghost in the background. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we're going to wrap it up. So Instagram will actually let us post this so more people can see it. So yeah, thanks for listening. I know it wasn't the most fun topic, but um, I get, questions about it a lot so I want to say thanks to um Kay for joining me because this is not again a fun topic so you're welcome Bri. and uh, anytime, anytime as long as we can help people that's the biggest thing you know and we can help each other and you've helped so many people well, all the <laughs> especially on the east coast it's going crazy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, sorry for the sad post during sad times, but you know what? It needs to be happened. You know, epilepsy is not unicorn farts and rainbows, sorry to say. So, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, well, that's it for us on this one. Um, I think I'm going to stop recording now, so bear with me while I stare at the camera for 20 minutes, okay? Bye. <laughs>